Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second, Commander Legends Baldur's Gate Edition, where we try to showcase some of the new commanders from this set. Baal, God of Murder, is playing Baal, what else? A Hulk list where Baal can replace Melira in some alternate lines. Diogo brought Elminster, a polymorph deck aiming to generate infinite mana to eventually draw the whole deck and win with Jace Wielder of Mysteries. David picked up Captain and Gathrod, mostly a milling deck aiming to slowly accrue value and win through a myriad of ways. Last but not least, Rodrigo brought Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. As a Boo lover, this list relies on similar win cons to his other Minsk deck, soon to be showcased in the channel. Diogo won the dice roll and is going first, however he had to move to 6, keeping a single island but with an opt to try to find another land into his Azorius Synod. Swan Song and Force of Will for interaction and hoping to dig further with the Fairy Master of Time. He sent Temporal Manipulation to the bottom. David Mulligan once and found a City of Brass and Ottawara soaring City for Lands, with plenty of ramp, Mana Vault and Arcane Signet. Nihil Spell Bomb can be key against Breach decks, which he can eventually fill the graveyard unwillingly, with stuff like that mesmeric art. Phyrex and Revoker is a needle on a stick, which happens to be an horror as well. Rodrigo kept a risky first 7, with a single land, wooded foothills. However, Elvish Mystic and Dragovan can help curve out to Goblin Matron or Domri Anarch of Bolas, for some extra power while his boo is out, to find even more card draw through Minsk. Natural Order and Finale of Devastation for tutors to Protein Hulk or other combo outlets. Lastly, Balmulligan to 6, not wanting to go lower, keeping a Siege of Brass and Windswept Teeth for lands, with an Elves of Deep Shadow and Birds of Paradise for ramp. Noxious Revival for Interaction and the Midhook Massacre is a possible outlet as well as a Wrath. He sent Mana Confluence to the bottom. Ready for the match? Diogo starts the game with a good top deck. He plays an Island and casts the Drawn Mana Vault, allowing him to cast Azorius Signet and using it to cast Opt right away, hoping to dig. He scries to the bottom before drawing and passes. David plays Ottawara and casts Mana Vault, also passing. Rodrigo plays a Wooded Foothills, cracking it for a Taiga and casts his Ragavan, ending the turn. Bal plays a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a Bayou to cast Elves of Deep Shadow, passing to Diogo. He draws and takes one from the Vault. He found his second island and plays it, following it up with a Mystic Remora and passing the turn. David plays a Sunken Ruins and goes ahead, casting his commander, Captain Angathrod, hoping to start gaining some value from some attacks. Rodrigo gets to his turn and sends Ragavan towards Diogo right away. It triggers exiling Enlightened Tutor and creating a treasure. He then plays a forest and casts Domri, an Archer of Bolas, triggering Remora and unable to pay. He then upticks them for green to cast Elvish Mystic and passes. Bal plays a Bloodstained Mire and casts a Birds of Paradise. He then cracks his fetch for a Taiga and casts a Demonic Tutor, triggering Remora and unable to pay, but then Diogo responds with a Swan Song and Bal sadly passes. Diogo untaps and pays for the fish to stay. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Tundra. He then casts a Merchant Scroll and searches for a Mystical Tutor, as what he's looking for is actually a sorcery. David gets to his turn, draws and takes one from the vault. He casts a Hydran Crab and then plays his City of Brass, triggering the crab and directing Baal to mill 3, hoping to find a Dockside or some value. He then goes to combat and attacks Rodrigo directly, since his commander has menace and it connects, triggering and milling Rodrigo for 3. In his second main phase, he casts Mesmeric Orb, triggering Remora and unable to pay. Diogo draws and then responds with his Force of Will, pitching the Fairy Master of Time. David goes to his end step, triggering his commander and targeting Baal's Mana Vault, putting it into play, now having 2. Rodrigo plays a Scalding Tarn and cracks it for his Stomping Ground. He then casts his commander, Minsk and Wu, Timeless Heroes triggering Remora and unable to pay. It resolves and triggers to create a Boo token. He then upticks Minsk and Boo, putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Boo, whose 5 power is not enough to fight Captain Angathrod. This way, he goes to combat and attacks Diogo with Ragavan and David with Boo. Ragavan triggers for a land and a treasure, and then on his second main phase, Rodrigo downticks Domri to have Boo fight the Swan token, passing afterwards. Baal plays a City of Brass and casts himself from the command zone, hoping to bring some pressure to those two walkers. We're back to Diogo's turn. He still pays for Remora to stay, draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Marshlets and simply passes. David draws and takes one damage from one of his vaults. He then shows his playing Tribal by casting Fear Rex and Revoker. It enters and David chooses Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. He then goes to combat and attacks Domri with his commander before passing. Rodrigo draws and also jumps to combat, sending Ragavan towards Diogo for the third time. An island is revealed and he gets another treasure. He then goes to his second main phase and casts a Finale of Devastation, X equals 2, to have his options open, not sure what to get. Remora triggers and he can't pay. 
but Diogo cracks his flats in response to find a planes before drawing. And as Rodrigo goes through the deck, he finds the perfect answer, a Mog Fanatic, which he then sends to his doom, pinging Phyrexian Revoker and releasing Minsk and Boo's potential. He then casts a free Invigorate, targeting Boo and giving Diogo 3 life, triggering Remora and hoping Diogo would not counter it. Diogo responds to the Remora trigger with his Mystical Tutor and finds a Snap to the top, which he draws and casts towards Boo, fizzling Invigorate and Rodrigo's dreams of drawing 11 cards. He then upticks Minskambu with no targets and passes the turn. Baal gets to his turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He ponders attacks and sends only Baal towards Minskambu to put the weight of removing it on David's commander. He then cracks his fetch for a tapped Overgrown Tomb and passes. Diogo still pays for his Remora and then draws and takes one from the vault. He plays Inventor's Fair and casts a Luminarch Ascension, hoping to get some creatures for his Polymorphs. We are on the vid's turn. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a Marsh Flats, triggering the crab and targeting Rodrig with it. He then cracks the fetch to find an Underground Sea, this time targeting Baal with the crab's trigger, having deprived both players of good tutors. He goes to combat and attacks Diogo, so he won't start accumulating Ascension counters. He mules Diogo for 3 and also deprives him of good cards. In the second main phase, the vid casts a Praetor's Grasp, targeting Diogo and exiling Jace Wilder of Mysteries. He proceeds to his NCEP and his captain brings an Arcane Signet from Diogo to play. Rodrigo taps and Minsk and Boo triggers, creating another Boo token. Rodrigo then goes to combat and keeps hitting Diogo with Dragavand, triggering and creating a treasure and exiling a Mana Confluence. In his second main phase, he casts Goblin Matron and searches for a Vexing Shusher to try to set up his win. He casts it and upticks Minsk and Boo, growing his Boo token to 4 before passing. Baal draws into a Regvan that he dashes in, attacking Diogo as well with his commander Baal. This time, Regvan exiles a Narset, but as Baal goes to his second main phase, he rather get rid of Sushar, hoping to deter Rodrigo from winning uncontested, so he casts the Meathook Massacre, X equals 2. Remora triggers and he can't pay. It enters wiping most of the board and gaining Baal 5 life as well as making his opponents lose 3 life each. Baal also triggers off the dead creatures and he pumps himself to 7 power, ending his turn. Diogo finally lets the fish go. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays an island and casts his commander, El Minster. It resolves and he down takes him to exile the top card of his deck, and it's a Cult. So he creates two fairy tokens, hoping to survive a turn cycle and going for it. We're on the vid's turn. He draws and takes one from the vault. He plays a snow covered swamp and tries to go for it, casting a Nihil spell bomb, to hopefully have two sources of draw, as he now casts Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, exiled through Praetor's Grasp. David then casts a Tainted Pact, but in response to it, Bald channels his Bozejo on the Nihil Spellbomb, which David then responds by cracking the Spellbomb, exiling Bald's Graveyard and paying Black to be able to draw a card as well. Tainted Pact then resolves and he exiles the whole deck, until the last card, which is a Shen of Vapor. David then tries to uptick Jace for Rodrigo to mill two cards, and then draw a card, hoping to win the game, but in response, Diego casts his own Shen of Vapor on Jace which eventually leads to David losing as he attempts to draw from an empty library. Gee, remember how CDH used to be before Thassa's Oracle? Loki wants to pay his respects to David, almost messing the current board state. Diogo gets his first Luminarch Ascension counter, and we're on Rodrigo's turn. He ponders for his second and goes for his Signal the Clans, finding Goblin Recruiter, Dockside Exorcist and Imperial Recruiter, and from the three, he randomly puts Imperial Recruiter in his hand. He needed Dockside to win on the spot, but this way he'll need another turn. He then attacks Elminster with Boo, and on his second main phase, he down ticks Minsk and Boo, sacrificing Boo to draw 4 cards and deal 4 damage directly to Diogo. Midhook triggers and Baal gains 1 life. Rodrigo then plays a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a forest, casting Boreal Druid and Birds of Paradise, ending his turn. Baal draws and goes straight into combat, attacking Diogo for 7, but Baal is shunned blocked, triggering Midhook for another life and then he passes, and Ascension gets his second counter. Diogo draws and takes one from the vault. He plays an exotic orchard and casts a Proteus Staff. He then activates it, targeting his fairy, and in response, Rodrigo casts a Lightning Bolt on it. But Diogo still had a muddled mixture for protection, so the polymorphing starts. Well, that was quick. He now casts a Chromox, triggering Hullbreaker Aura, to return Man of All to his hand, and then he imprints his other card in hand, a Gitaxin Probe. With his one blue mana, he can cast the Vault, triggering Hullbreaker to return Chromox to his hand. With the Vault and Chromox, he can generate infinite colorless mana, and from there he can start bouncing the Azorius Signet to be able to recast it and filter his colorless mana into Azorius mana. This way, he can now cast his commander, Elminster, and activate it to draw a card, 
followed by casting one of his rocks to bounce and recast the Planeswalker, and activate it again and again. He could now draw his entire library, if only David hadn't stolen Jace, so instead he's forced to use his backup plan and manually go through his deck, until he finds Nexus of Fate, and from there he starts down-ticking his commander at each iteration and start creating fairies, and his deck still had plenty of cards with enough mana value to create 71 fairies, and kill his opponent in the next extra turn. GG. After this match we decided to play another one, this time David won the dice roll and he's going first. He, however, had to mulligan down to 6, not wanting to go lower, finding a City of Brass and Ottawara soaring City for lands. Lotus Petal and Talisman of Dominance for Ramp, with a Wish Clock Talisman and Spell Seeker to find his combo pieces. He sent an island to the bottom. Rodrigo mulligan once and found a Stomping Ground and Urza Saga for lands, with a Lanor Elves and Arcane Signet for Ramp. Domri and Narc of Bolas has already shown his potential, as well as Invigorate, that freely adds up on the cards able to be drawn by Minsk and Boo. Lightning Bolt is a versatile removal piece seeing more and more play. Ball Mulligan once as well, and kept an Exotic Orchard, Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth and Phyrexian Tower as lands, with an Elves of Deep Shadow and Ignoble Hierarch for ramp, and Jeskus Wheel for some value and Necromancy for reanimation shenanigans. Diogo also mulligan once and didn't want to go lower, happy with a single Egg Angel Seat of the Empire, but with a Chromox as a blue source of mana, considering the rest of his hand. Preordain can help him find more lands, while Mental Misstep, Fierce Guardianship and Counterbalance help control the match. Mystical Tutor can find him Polymorph or something else he might need. Let's see how this one unfolds. David starts the game with an Ottawara Sarin City and casts a Lotus Petal, passing the turn. Rodrigo plays an Untapped Stomping Ground and casts a Lanora Elves, also passing. Ball plays an Exotic Orchard and then casts an Ignoble Hierarch, ending his turn. Diogo top decks a nice land, an Exotic Orchard, which allows him to cast Chromox, imprinting Fierce Guardianship and then cast his Counterbalance on turn 1. David gets to his turn and plays a City of Brass, followed by a Talisman of Dominance, hoping Diogo finds it not threatening enough to acknowledge his Counterbalance trigger, but he does and reveals a Missions Briefing, effectively countering it. Rodrigo plays an Urza Saga, entering and gaining its first ability, and then casts Domri and Arc of Bolas. If you also feel like a deja vu, don't worry, the game will be different for sure. He upticks Domri and passes. Bal casts an Elves of Deep Shadow and then attacks Domri for one with his exalted Ignoble. He then plays a Phyrexian Tower and passes. Diogo gets to his turn and casts a Preordain, scrying both to the bottom and drawing. He then plays the Aganjo and passes the turn. David didn't find a land, and without the talisman he sadly passes. Rodrigo draws and his Urza Saga gains its second ability. He then plays a forest and upticks Domri for red mana to then cast his Minsk and Boo. Counterbalance triggers and Diogo responds to it with his mystical tutor. While he ponders on Polymorph, his PTSD from being a punching bag the game before tells him to go for his supreme verdict. And so Minsk and Boo are countered. Bal gets to his turn, plays an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, and without much else to do, he summons himself to play, and then passes the turn. Diogo draws the verdict and is forced to pass the turn. David finds and plays a Misty Rainforest, which he cracks for an underground sea. He then casts a Fabricate, triggering counterbalance, and Diogo reveals an island, which prevents David from going for a Mana Crypt at this point. So he goes for a Sol Ring and casts it, cracking his petal and passes the turn. Rodrigo draws and his Urza Saga gains his third ability, and he taps it in response before searching for his Sol Ring into play. He then plays a Mana Confluence and activates Domri for one mana to help him cast Minsk and Boo, entering and creating a Boo token. Rodrigo asks if Baal is on Ad Nauseam, which is not, so he casts an Invigorate targeting Boo and making Baal gain 3 life, which doesn't help Baal's attempt at learning his life, so that Baal becomes indestructible, before Diogo casts the Wrath. Regardless, Rodrigo attacks Ball for 5, and then on his second main phase he down ticks Minsk and Boo, but in response to the ability, Diogo casts a Baby Rift on Boo, and this way Rodrigo will only be able to sacrifice his Lenor Elves to the ability, which he floats mana in response before sacrificing, targeting Ignoble Hierarch. Rodrigo ends up drawing no cards, but Ignoble does die, and Ball puts a counter on himself. Rodrigo then casts an Arcane Signet and passes the turn. Bal plays an untapped overgrown tomb, paying 2 life, and then casts a Jeskus Will, targeting David who has 4 cards in hand. The revealed cards are not so great at the moment, but he casts a Sylvan Library, and in order not to lose the exiled cards forever, he sacrifices the elf with Virexion Tower for double black, triggering Bal for a counter, and then he casts a Corpse Dance to put Elves of Deep Shadow back into play with haste, which helps him cast Animate Dead on the Ignoble Hierarch, being put back into play. 
He then goes into combat and attacks Domri for 7, before going to his end step, and Elves of Deep Shadow is exiled. Dio simply draws and plays his island, passing right away. David gets to his turn and simply casts his commander to try to convince Diogo to not play his Wrath, so that he can deal with Minsk. Counterbalance triggers, but being a mana value 5 spell, Diogo decides not to resolve it, and this way he doesn't show what's on top so Rodrigo doesn't play with free information. In Rodrigo's upkeep, he creates another boo token. On his main phase, he goes for a Vivian Monster's Advocate, hoping to eventually chain his creatures. However, this time Diogo responds to the counterbalance trigger with a mission briefing, Surveilling went to the graveyard and then casting his mystical tutor to find Ugerns inside to try to dig his way out of the hole. Vivian is countered and then Rodrigo upticks Minsk and Boo, growing his hamster and passes. Bal draws and pays 8 life for the library trigger. He found a Ragavan that he dashes, but this time Diogo is prepared with a mental misstep. Bal was hoping to cast that Ugerns inside and now he simply attacks Diogo for 7 and passes. Diogo gets to his turn and instantly casts his Supreme Verdict, before Baal can become indestructible and he becomes the punching bag again. Baal lets himself stay in the graveyard. We're back to David's turn. He casts Soul Guide Lantern right on time. Diogo doesn't reveal for his counterbalance, as that card can stop Rodrigo or Baal. The Lantern enters and exiles Baal from Baal's graveyard. David then casts Bruvac, which is his plan B in the deck. Counterbalance triggers and Diogo reveals a Mana Drain, so the Grandiloquent resolves. Rodrigo taps and creates his third hamster this match. He plays his Scalding Tarn and cracks it for a Taiga, so he can hardcast Protean Hulk. Everyone knows what's on top of Diogo's library, so with Minsk and Boo as a sack outlet for it, David is forced to cast a Pact on Regation. With his dreams foiled, Rodrigo upticks Minsk and Boo and then attacks David for 4, before passing. On his end step though, Ball flashes in a Necromancy. It enters play and it targets Rodrigo's Protean Hulk, so in response David cracks his Soul Guide Lantern for his opponents to exile their graveyards. Balen gets his turn, draws and pays 4 life for an extra card from the library. He then plays a Forbidden Orchard and then casts a Red Elemental Blast on Counterbalance, so he can follow that with his Dockside Extortionist, entering and creating 4 treasures, while David gains the spirit from the Orchard. Balen casts a Pattern of Rebirth on his Dockside Extortionist and follows that by casting a Visor Seer by sacrificing Dockside with Phyrexian Tower, while Visor Seer is on the stack, Pattern triggers and he searches for his own Protean Hulk into play. Visor resolves and he sacrifices the Hulk to Scry, and Protean Hulk triggers and he searches for a Phyrexian Delver and Seal and Safekeeper, just to be safe. Phyrexian Delver triggers and he gets Protean Hulk back into play, losing 7 life. He then sacrifices it to Visor Seer again, triggering it to find Melira's Silver Outcast and Murderer's Redcap, proposing a loop where he sacrifices Murderer's Redcap to Visor Seer, returning it to play due to Persist, but since he controls Melira, the minus 1 minus 1 counter can't be placed, so he can repeat this ad nauseum, killing his opponents with the Redcap ETB trigger. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone, game 1 was mainly dominated by Rodrigo's early planeswalkers and card advantage, which led to different players eventually feeding Diogo's Remora enough and he found the cards needed to go for a win at the right time after killing David in a timely fashion. Game 2 was still mainly influenced by the turn 1 counterbalance, and regardless, Rodrigo managed to go for it time and time again, even art casting Hulk, which opened the win for Bal to bait the lantern activation and go for his own line the turn after through Phyrex and Tower. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Aajimo, Drunken House Cat, V, RJ, Hita Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katarina, Michael Bowen, Super Caldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.